everyone, I'm Kat. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be doing another author taste test video. I have done this two other times, I believe, with Peter Swanson and Tiffany D. Jackson, and both times the videos went very well. So now I feel like I've been not cursed. What's the opposite of cursed? Like blessed with this video series, and I now expect every video I do in this series to go well, which will probably lead to some disappointment, but that's okay. So this week I'm gonna be reading some books from Jennifer Hillier. She is a very popular thriller author. I've heard so many people rave about her, but I haven't tried any of her books so far. This is a little different from the other videos I've done so far, where in those videos, all three of the books I read in both videos were on my TBR. This is the first time where only one book that I'm gonna be reading is on my TBR. As I said, I've heard a bunch about this author. I don't know why the books I've heard of never interested me enough to pick them up or add them to my TBR, but I do wanna try out this author. So because I only had one book from her on my TBR, we will get to which one that is. I didn't really know where to start. So I ended up going to Haley's channel who absolutely loves this author, especially one book from this author. I think is like her favorite book of all time. She talks about it so, so much. And she is definitely one of the reasons why I wanted to check out this author in the first place. But she did a video talking about Jennifer Hillier's backlist and ranking all of the books that she has read from her so far. So this is kind of an author taste test video, kind of a video reading Haley's favorite books from this author. Because what I ended up doing is picking the top three of her favorite books, kind of, I'll explain in a second. And then I also picked her least favorite. So in her number one spot, if you watch Haley, I'm sure you know what it is, but also so many other people talk about this book. I know Deja from Deja's Book World loves it, um, Gabby from Gabby Reads, and that is Jar of Hearts. I'm not gonna go into any description about any of these books because I don't know what any of them are about. I know they're all thrillers. I know this one is about a woman who is in prison. And that's about it. In her number two spot is The Butcher, which I believe is about a serial killer. Um, in her number three spot, and this is why I said I would explain, like, I'm kind of reading her top three. Um, her number three spot was Things We Do in the Dark, which she read an arc of. It has not come out yet. I think it's coming out in, like, July or something. So I wasn't able to read it. So instead, I'm going to be reading her number four spot, which I was excited about because this is the only one that is on my TBR, and that is Wonderland. Um, all I know about this is it takes place in, like, an amusement park, which I usually really like that sort of setting in thriller horror books and movies. And Haley's least favorite book from the author, which I think she still gave four stars, I don't really think she's disliked anything from her, is Little Secrets. Um, other than Jar of Hearts, this is the book that I've heard the most about. With that being said, I know absolutely nothing about it. I can't even give you like a little two word description. My plan of attack will say on how to read these even though I always set up these plans in my intros and then I end up not following them, but we'll see. Um, I think I want to start with Jar of Hearts. It's her number one favorite. It's so, so many people's favorites. It's one of the ones I've heard the most about. And then I'm going to go into Little Secrets just because I don't want to end this video with her least favorite and maybe one that I won't love. Then I'm going to read The Butcher and then we're going to end the video with Wonderland, which is the only one that was on my TBR. I'm excited. I hope this goes well. Um, I have a pretty hard time finding thrillers that I enjoy and I feel like people who read from this author typically like most if not all of her books so it'll be nice if I enjoy most of what I read in this video. I won't expect to love all of them. I feel like you can't ask that of me um, but I know I will have a reliable thriller author that I can go to. Oh my god excuse all my laundry in the back. It's clean I swear. I'm putting it away. It's like why my closet is open. Um, so I've been reading Jar of Hearts. I guess I'm already like almost halfway through, which I'm surprised by because I really don't have any thoughts so far. Let me actually read the synopsis of this so I know what I can and cannot tell you. Okay, so we are following a woman named Gio who ends up being arrested for a crime that she played a part in 14 years earlier. Um, she was best friends with this girl named Angela who ended up going missing. And then 14 years later, her remains were finally found. So she is arrested for her role in that. And her boyfriend at the time has also been arrested for that murder and since that murder he has been linked to three other murders as well. So she is put in prison. Um, we kind of go through her part in prison fairly quickly and it jumps ahead five years to when she's being released. And while she's in prison the ex-boyfriend Calvin ends up escaping um, and no one has seen him since but the day before she is supposed to be released a body is found that was killed in a very similar manner to these other bodies. So we're following Gio and we're also following Kaiser who is now a detective but 14 years earlier was best friends with Gio and Angela 
So he has obviously very personal ties to this case and he is investigating these new murders. But yeah, I don't know, no major thoughts so far. I'm like fairly intrigued as to what's going on. Although I guess we are, I guess we're meant to assume that this is Calvin, maybe it's not. Um, so I guess there's really not much of a mystery as to who's doing these murders, but rather the mystery is like why and what really happened 14 years earlier and like what part is Gio going to play in this all going down now? Or maybe it's not Calvin who's killing all these people because from the synopsis it actually sounds like more and more bodies are going to show up um, and it's someone else entirely and the twist is going to be having to do with that. But I don't know, I'm looking forward to getting more into it and like, well, I guess I'm already halfway. That's why I'm surprised because I'm not really, I don't know. I feel like I haven't read much of a story yet, if that makes sense. But I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. I hope I get a little bit more pulled in. Haley, if you're watching this, exit out babes, exit out. I don't even really know what to rate this because I don't think it was bad, but it was just nothing. Like the most nothing book I've ever read. There were two twists in here, and I guessed both of them, but like they were the kind of things that I didn't even feel like I guessed. I didn't feel like a like a cute little detective. Um, I felt like the book told them to me 50 pages before they were revealed. As I mentioned in my previous clip, I was feeling pretty ambivalent for a lot of this book, but I had always heard that the end was like explosive and insane, and it was this big buildup. And then I read the ending and I'm like, this, this was it? I was expecting the most crazy shit to happen in here. I've heard this is like gruesome and grotesque. I've heard it compared to Karen Slaughter books who I read from before and I know she does not hold back in the violence way of things. And like, maybe I'm fucked up. Maybe I've read too many horror books, watched too many true crime shows, watched too many scary movies. This felt like a, a an episode of Criminal Minds, like a PG-13. TV show, aired on cable TV. Nothing was that crazy. I don't know, I'm so confused. And the epilogue. What was with the epilogue? Why was there like an HEA romance epilogue at the end of my thriller? What would people like about this? Like, I don't know. The characters were flat, the twists were predictable, the writing was fine but pretty basic without spoilers for a second and then i think i might get into spoilers but i will give a warning i will have it time stamped um but without spoilers there are three people in this book who are responsible for killing another person and you only get the motive for one of those people like i want to know what was going on with the other two people like what's their story what are they thinking and you never get that okay spoilers now there will be a time stamp where you can skip to you're gonna tell me geo was the one responsible for cutting up Angela. And you're gonna give me nothing after that. No explanation for why she did that. Like, are we supposed to just believe it was because of her relationship with Calvin or she was just like in shock or something? I don't know, I think I could have been explored more and been something so much more interesting if it explored her being like really jealous of Angela and kind of thinking her life would be easier without Angela. Her going on to be the killer, that would have been so much more interesting, but instead it was just nothing. Like I said, have no idea how to rate this because I don't think it was bad, but it <laughs> certainly wasn't good. Like it was just nothing. Like two stars, I guess? But guys, I'm so sad and I'm so confused. Oh, and the romance in here. I saw some reviews saying like, oh, a romance in a thriller that I actually cared about, but I didn't give a single fuck. Like <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know anything about these people to care that they were in a relationship. I didn't know why they liked each other even. Like, I don't know anything about their motivations, their thoughts, their wants, their needs. I know nothing and I, I don't understand. Um, so I'm gonna be moving on to Little Secrets. As I mentioned in the intro, this is Haley's least favorite Jennifer Hillier, but she still did give it four stars as I thought. I just rewatched her ranking video. Um, she gave it four stars and I learned a little bit about what it was about. It's about a kidnapping and following the mother whose son is kidnapped. I'm excited, but I'm hesitant because I'm really confused by Jar of Hearts. Guys, I'm scared. I'm scared 
this author is not for me. So I started Little Secrets. I'm already like 60% of the way into it um, because I started it one night and then I was gonna update you the next day, but I didn't get a chance to. And then yesterday I had an absolutely awful day, partially personal, but partially because I live in a country that sucks. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't feel like getting into it, but I was just very upset yesterday and I didn't feel like filming. Anyway, 60% um, in. <laughs> I'm really not liking this book. Basically the short synopsis I mentioned earlier is kind of all I really want to give you at this point. The story is definitely not what I expected but I feel like the direction it starts to go in um, is kind of a spoiler. I should look up like what it says in the synopsis. Okay what I thought would be a spoiler they actually tell you in the synopsis so I guess I'll tell you. We are following a woman named Marion and the story starts with her and her son Sebastian at a mall and he ends up going missing and they see on a video camera him being led away by someone dressed as Santa Claus. It's around Christmas time. And then we fast forward a year later, I think it's like 15 months, and he has still not been found. Um, and she has hired a private investigator because the FBI and the police have kind of stopped investigating because there are no new leads. And through this PI, she learns that her husband is having an affair. And then she kind of becomes obsessed with getting revenge in a way. I really wouldn't call this a revenge story though. She just wants the other woman out of the picture essentially. And I really would have thought that would be a spoiler, but they tell you that in, some, in the synopsis, which I find strange. The reason I'm worried this author isn't for me is because I'm having a lot of the same complaints with this book that I had with Jar of Hearts. I don't think I mentioned this with Jar of Hearts, but there were a lot of parts that were very repetitive and the same thing is happening in here. In Jar of Hearts, it was constantly being brought up like six or seven times. I know that's not constantly, but it's a lot for just this one thing to be brought up. It was constantly brought up that, um, what was her name? Gio was in prison. Now she's out of prison how difficult it is to return to a normal life. And like, she lays out, you know, I had this routine in prison where I did X, Y, and Z, but now I don't have that anymore and it's really hard to adjust to normal life. And in here, the statistics of missing children keep getting brought up, like how the likelihood of finding a missing child after 24 hours, it goes down by like 90% or something, I think. And we also hear from the woman that Derek, the husband is having an affair with. And in her chapters, she keeps mentioning how like, things have changed in her affair and in the beginning it was like sunshines and rainbows and now I think it's like six months later um he seems more withdrawn and things are changing and she keeps mentioning that just very repetitive also again feels like a pretty boring nothing book 60% in only one vaguely exciting interesting thing has happened I guess the first chapter was pretty good like when her son goes missing I did feel that like anxiety from her, but the other vaguely interesting exciting thing that I was talking about, we only get one sentence about it. And since that has happened, we haven't returned to it yet. Also, there have been a couple like mini reveals in here, but they're reveals that I don't know if they're meant to be reveals because I feel like I was told them so long ago. Um, Towards the beginning of this book, Marin says like she tells her therapist something that she's been doing and her therapist is like, oh my gosh, that's so unhealthy. Like I'm really worried about you. They don't explicitly tell us what it is she's doing, but I don't know, like am I just, <laughs> am I a genius? Sorry, it's probably much darker now. My phone died and I had to wait for it to charge a bit. But the thing is, I'm not a genius. I am a self-identified dummy. I <laughs> never predict twists. Um, I never really even, think about predicting twists or like think about what the twist could be if it's a good thriller. I just kind of get wrapped up in the story and what's happening. Um, I very rarely try to predict what's going to happen. And again, something similar that I talked to about with Jar of Hearts. Um, I guess I wasn't going to talk about this, but they kind of pretty, <laughs> I was just going to say pretty bigly. <laughs> they pretty strongly hint at this in the synopsis that uh, the main character, Marin, wants to do something to take care of the other woman, Kenzie, I think her name is. But it just happens like this. There is no deliberation, no real hesitation about Marin doing this to Kenzie. And there needs to be some thought and hesitation. And if there's not thought and hesitation, there needs to be an explanation and some motivation. Like, am I just supposed to believe Marin is some sort of 
psychopath that doesn't have any real empathy for other people so she doesn't even care about doing this. I don't know, I just don't understand her. I don't really understand any of the characters. As of right now, I have no real predictions for what is going on with the missing child, with Sebastian. He has really barely been a part of the story when I expected the whole thing to be about him. Um, I don't really have a guess right now as to how everything is going to come together. Um, I think I'm going to try and finish it tonight because I kind of just want to move on to the other two stories. Because the other two stories, well, The Butcher, I don't know, but Wonderland, I still think I could like, and that was the only one that was on my TBR. I'm sorry, but this is going to be such a bad review of Little Secrets. Not bad, like negative. Well, <laughs> we'll get there. Um, but I forgot to film right after I finished the book, and then I took a break from this video to do Thrill Till the Weekend, and then I just started reading um, The Butcher. And then I started editing this video and I noticed I never filmed my final thoughts on Little Secrets. So you'll see me look like this again in a second. Um, but it's now been almost a week since I finished Little Secrets and I remember almost nothing about the book and almost nothing about how I felt about the book. But I think that's kind of a testament to how I felt about the book. I think the updates I gave as I was reading are kind of how I ended up feeling at the end of the story anyway. Um, but some words I would use to describe this book. Boring predictable, repetitive. I went into this expecting a kidnapping story and that's just not at all what you get. I guess that's kind of on me because after reading the synopsis, it does kind of lay out more of what the book is actually about. But I was expecting a kidnapping story and instead I just got yet again, another like domestic cheating situation, which I am just not interested in those types of thrillers at all anymore. All of the characters just feel so flat to me. I don't understand their motivations at all for anything they do and it really confuses me. Uh, I don't know if I said my rating, I'm gonna give this two stars. It was not my favorite. I'm wearing the ugliest fucking tank top I own, but I have this heart monitor on, I'm fine. I just have to wear it for two weeks and I wanna keep it covered up when I go out and this is the only tank top I have that would do that. I've been wearing t-shirts, but I am unbearably hot today and I just need to be in a tank top. It was 90 yesterday, it's 95 today and my AC is broken and I cannot stand the heat. One, I just don't like it. And two, I'm very sensitive to it. Like see heart monitor and being in the heat exacerbates the symptoms I feel because of my heart. I skipped my lunch so I could leave work an hour early. I just needed to be out of my apartment. Last time I looked, it was 90 degrees in there. Um, and I got a ticket to go see Top Gun. Tickets at the movie theater are $6 on Tuesdays. I have negative interest in seeing Top Gun. I've never seen a Top Gun movie, um, but there was really no other movies I wanted to see. And I just, I need to be in AC for two hours. I have started The Butcher. I'm about 90 pages in, I think. And so far I have good feelings. I think at this point in both of the other books I've read so far, I was already feeling like, eh, I don't know if this girl is for me, but this I'm liking so far, I'm interested. So the entire book kind of revolves around the serial killer who is called The Butcher. We are following three characters who all kind of have connections to him. Um, one character, his name is Ed, I think, and he is like a retired police officer and he is the one who shot and killed The Butcher. We're following his grandson, Matt, and then we're following Matt's girlfriend, Sam, who is really interested in The Butcher and not just interested, but she believes that her mother was murdered by the butcher but her mother was murdered two years after the butcher supposedly died so sam believes that the person who was shot and killed and identified as the butcher isn't really the butcher and he's still out there and he killed her mother i'm really interested to see where this is gonna go we learned something pretty early on i checked the synopsis and it's not said on the synopsis so it's like an early reveal and i am so intrigued to see where this storyline is gonna go I hope it goes in the direction I want it to. I feel like that'd be super interesting. I'm enjoying following Sam especially. I just, I like her storyline and I like her. Um, I will say though, the audiobook, I do not like. I try listening to it and the voice the narrator does for Matt, I absolutely hate. The other voices he does for other people who are talking are fine, but for Matt, he makes him sound like a 12 year old boy and like everything he says is a joke. Like at one point he was talking to someone and I was listening to it as if it was like a 
jokey teasing conversation but then I was sitting and thinking about it and I'm like oh no this is like a very serious thing that's going on but just the tone that the narrator uses it makes him sound like a 12 year old boy that's just fucking around so I do not like the audiobook I don't think I'm going to continue listening to it movie review it was fine uh I don't really like movies like that that feel like war propaganda but you know it was good enough and you know what was more than good enough was buff miles teller with a little a little porn stash oh he was doing things for me i really planned on updating more like as i was reading this but i have been in such a bad mood <laughs> these past few days because of my ac being out uh we're back on now thank god but i really didn't feel like talking to anybody but i did end up finishing the butcher sadly i think i'm gonna give it two and a half stars and i really don't want to sound like a broken record i hate repeating myself so i don't know how much i'm gonna go into my thoughts and feelings on this one but i had a lot of the same issues with this book as i had with the other two books i've read so far i was more interested in this one at first i was liking it more at first which is why it gets a little extra half star while the other books just got two stars um but it just i don't know like at the end i just did not end up liking what i read i didn't end up enjoying my reading experience i don't know if i have specifically talked about the writing yet because I hate commenting on authors writing because like who the fuck am I but I just don't think her writing is that good I'm sorry I know I've mentioned the repetitiveness of the writing and here it wasn't as bad like in the other two books it was like one specific phrase or idea that kept getting repeated um and here that was less of a problem but there were still like two or three things that just were continuously repeated like from the perspective of the retired police officer he's like an older guy he kept saying aging sucks donkey balls like that specific sentence that specific phrase was repeated like four or five times and there was also a specific phrase that matt kept repeating i can't really say what it is because it's kind of a spoiler um but besides the repetitiveness i just find the writing to be very like amateur i feel so mean saying this i just feel like i don't have the grounds to critique someone's writing so let's move on from that um there are also a few plot holes in here that were really really bothering me like i actually went back and reread several parts because i was like am i just not remembering this correctly or is this a plot hole and they were definitely plot holes there was also so much time spent on matt and sam's relationship which i just did not care about at all and i also really didn't understand there is just so much page time dedicated to matt wondering if sam is fucking somebody else and sam wondering if matt is fucking somebody else and i'm so confused by their relationship because they have been dating for three years which like to me is a serious pretty long-term relationship and they like never interact they seem to not really know anything about the other person they I don't know they just like don't communicate and tell each other things it was very strange and again this has now been an issue with every single book i've read so far um the characters just don't make sense to me <laughs> some of the things they do and the motivations behind them we just don't really get the motivations and i don't understand why they do some of the things they do i said earlier i was hoping this would go in a specific direction it did not go in that direction and I did not like the direction it went in. I'm like pausing because <laughs> I kind of feel like it didn't even go in any direction. Like we kind of find out the whole story in the first few chapters. There's really no mystery or twists and turns or thrilling things happening. There is one reveal, but again, it was the type of reveal that I felt like I had learned 60 pages earlier. And again, it wasn't like one of those things where I was like, ooh, I think I figured this out. I felt like the author was specifically telling us that this was what was going on. But then like 60 pages later, it's this big reveal and I'm just very, I'm very confused. I feel kind of bad doing this video. I considered scrapping it after I finished Little Secrets and now I'm kind of considering scrapping it again. Cause like, it just doesn't feel good to continue to read books from someone that you don't think is gonna be the author for you. But like I saved this last book because it was the only one that was on my TBR and part of me still does want to read it. So I guess I will, but I'm scared. It's <laughs> scary is maybe not the right word to use, but it's scary to me, for lack of a better word, um, that I'm just continuously having these same exact issues with every single book. It's not like I read a book and I didn't like this plot twist or I, this story wasn't my favorite or this trope wasn't my favorite. It's just like these same exact issues with every single book.
Hopefully the sound isn't too bad. I decided to come out to Mill Mountain if you're from the Roanoke area. This is probably one of my favorite spots, favorite views, and I've always wanted to watch the sunset from here, so I decided to do it tonight. But I've been reading Wonderland as I sit here. I'm on page 109. The whole book pretty much revolves around this amusement park that is called Wonderland. The story kind of kicks off when there is a dead body found in the middle of the park. And we're mainly following this woman named Vanessa, who is named the new deputy chief. Um, of the town where Wonderland is and she is investigating this crime and through investigating it she finds out like other weird things that have happened at the park that are connected to the park. I'm fairly intrigued so far but I'm a little bit nervous. I feel like there are way too many things being introduced. I just don't see how we're gonna get answers to all of them and how they're all gonna be connected um, and like part of me is wondering are these not actually things that are meant to be a part of the story but then i'm confused as to why they're being brought up at all like just to name a few the story actually starts off with this boy climbing the ferris wheel at the park he's like a free climber and he wants to climb the ferris wheel and take a picture at the top um, and something happens to him and he is also connected to the ceo of the park who is also doing weird things we have the dead body that's found at the park um, there's something going on with the security guard at the park. Vanessa has something going on with her ex-boyfriend who was on trial for something and used her for something in relation to that. Um, she also has a husband that has recently passed and there's kind of like a question around that. There's something about like a missing kid that's been missing for three years that Vanessa was asked about on her first day at her job. And I kind of have a prediction for how that is related to something else, but I don't know. I just feel like I'm getting a lot and I don't see how these are all gonna be wrapped up and I don't see how these are all connected. And I don't know if like everything is relevant. Should I be keeping track of all this stuff? It just feels like a lot. Okay, I feel like I've finally been able to pinpoint, articulate a problem I have with this author's writing. And it's that she seems to spell everything out for the reader. The part I was just reading, and I'll be vague so I don't give any spoilers, but we're reading about a woman who is talking about this relationship she had with a guy. And she says, this guy is the first person that she's ever slept with. She was never with anyone else. And she was in a committed relationship with this person. She misses a period and takes a pregnancy test. And then she says, the test came out positive and the baby was blanks. Of course it was, she'd never been with anyone else. It's like, I know, you just told me that. All you had to say was, the test came out positive and I could have put all the other pieces together. And she does this a lot, like two characters will be talking to each other, um, trying to figure out the connection between something or what's really going on here. And I will get the gist of the conclusion they're trying to come to just from reading the conversation. But there's always like a line or a few lines at the end of the conversation that sums up the conclusion. Like Miss Hillier, I know how to use context clues. Listen, I am very unhappy with how this video went and I feel like I curse myself because wasn't I talking about in the intro how these videos have always gone well for me in the past and I always end up finding a new favorite author and I said like, oh, I hope I'm not cursing myself right now. I think I did. So now I feel like I've been not cursed. What's the opposite of cursed? Like blessed with this video series and I now expect every video I do in this series to go well, which will probably lead to some disappointment. Let's talk about Wonderland first and then we'll do my final thoughts um, after that. So I think I'm gonna give Wonderland two and a half stars. I don't know, I'm kind of questioning my ratings of all four of the books just because I can't really think of many or any good things to say about any of them, which feels so mean, but I'm questioning my ratings of everything, but I didn't love Wonderland. I think the thing I'm most disappointed by is the absolute lack of vibes in the story. I was hoping for like a really creepy carnival, weird amusement park sort of vibes, you know, like creepy clowns, french fries, cotton candy, corn dogs, and there was none of that. This was truly just a thriller that happened to be taking place at a carnival. The twist was surprising, but it was one of those twists that I really don't like where it just is surprising because it comes out of nowhere. There are no little clues or hints given throughout the story that tells you this is maybe the person responsible. It was just completely out of the blue. And while that was surprising, the rest of the story I just found to be completely predictable. It just went in a direction and 
did things that I was expecting as soon as certain things were introduced. And speaking of things that are introduced, there were so many things going on in the story, so many things that were brought up and introduced that just go absolutely nowhere. And it didn't feel like they were meant to be red herrings or anything, they just felt like mistakes to me. Also this has nothing to do with the plot or anything but near the end someone is talking to the cops and they get a lawyer and the lawyer is trans and I would have been totally happy if they introduced a trans character. I'm always looking for more representation, more just casual representation. They didn't have to do anything other than introduce this trans character but like the only part this character played in the story is they were brought up, there was some transphobia spewed at them and then they were done away with and I just I don't understand that at all. Um, I get a character saying transphobic, racist, sexist things for the point of showing that this character is a bad person. Like that was done a lot in The Butcher, which I didn't love just because I think there's more interesting ways to show that someone is a bad person other than making them just say hateful shit. But I understand it. But in here, I don't get it at all. I don't even feel like the author was trying to show that the person saying this transphobic shit was a bad person or anything. I just, I, I don't get why it was included and it really annoyed me. There were certain things and elements that I was interested in in the beginning, but they just ended up going absolutely nowhere and just disappearing from the story entirely or just ending in a spot that I didn't find entertaining or interesting or satisfying. So a final wrap up of the four books I read. Obviously this video did not go well. I didn't enjoy anything I read. Um, this author I found is definitely not the girly for me. Because I had a lot of the same issues and complaints with all four of the books I read, I just feel like those issues will be constants in her other books as well for me. Um, overall I just feel like this author is where storylines and character motivations go to die. I know so many people love her and love her books and I love that for you but uh me and Jennifer Hillier are breaking up and that's okay. I'm glad I tried her out. She's been on my mind for a while so I'm glad I checked her off the list finally. Let me know an author you would like to see me try out in the future. I would definitely try and do this again to relieve myself of this curse. Hopefully the next one it goes better than this one did. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>